Just waiting for you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Well, uh, I, I taught school for a long, long time. And I do know ways to get attention, <laughs> but I don't want to do any of those. And um, I, I want to say that we're going to look at the first Gospel of John. And there's always people who criticize the Bible. And they say, well, Moses wasn't in it, and this isn't in it, and John didn't write this or that. And those folks are liars. I mean, let's just put it up straight. I mean, when you look at the Gospel of John and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, it's indisputable it was written by one person, and that was John. I mean... It, there's no reason even to, I don't know why I brought that up. I mean, <laughs> just to diffuse that information. And uh, uh, it's, you just can't allow to get those lies in your head. Why put doubts where there shouldn't be any at all? The first John uh, doesn't say, I am John writing this. But there's no doubt about it. In Second and Third John, he, the, he says, I am John the Elder. And he describes in that, is written to a church in Ephesus as revealed in Second and Third John. And is the Gospel of John, the First, Second, Third John, one author, no doubt about it. And John also wrote another book. He's got four in the New Testament, and actually five. You got to set Revelations also. And uh, his writing style is one of complete admiration for Christ and God the Father. And you can tell by First John that he thinks of God the Father and Jesus as being just basically one word, he sums them up as God, you know. And uh, I want to, there's, we're going to look at only seven verses here, and then next week I think Fran's going to go on to the next uh, book. But uh, I'm going to read this to you, and it's well worth listening to very, very carefully. It just says, the word of life. <clears throat> what was from the beginning and what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have held and touched with our hands concerning the word of life and the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested in to us, we, what we have seen, heard, we proclaim to you also, so you may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Hey, he doesn't, he's not pulling anything here. He's just saying straight up, right? And these things we are writing so that our joy may be made complete. Verse 5, and this is a message we have heard from him, capital him, and declare to you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say that we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, this is where we need to really pay attention. Right here, we lie and do not do the truth. But we, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. 
What a, what a writer. What a man who knows God. What a man who proclaims God. He doesn't even want you to know his name. Very humble. God is in front of me every which way. And I am going to proclaim him and leave myself out of it. Now, you notice that in the beginning, there's also the Gospel of John. It kind of starts the same way. I mean, he says something very similar to that. And it says, let's see, right here, John 1. This is the Gospel of John. And it starts out by saying, in the beginning. This was the word, and the word was with God. This is capitalized because the word here he's talking about is a person, Jesus Christ. And the word was God and was in the beginning with God. Jesus didn't show up when he was born in Bethlehem. There's all sorts of scriptures that show us and reveal us Jesus in the Old Testament. You don't have to look very hard to find them. Because no man, including Adam, ever has seen the face of God the Father, Jesus came and spoke to Adam. Jesus came and spoke to Moses, face to face. God the Father does not speak to people face to face. Jesus is plastered all over the Old Testament, and it, it doesn't take much work to see it. And when you read the Old Testament, you can see Jesus, and he does not say he was not revealed until he was declared himself the Messiah. But he was veiled, slightly hidden from us, until now, we have the scriptures to know. And it goes on to say, it is him, in him was life, and the life was the light of the men, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not overcome it. I want to remind you that uh, whatever darkness we see, whatever evil we see, whatever evil we notice, it is not overcome God. It is not winning. It's not going to win. It will never be a win. And in Revelations, Jesus sends Satan and his followers to the lake of fire with a word. Not a battle, not a fight. No one shoots bazookas. I mean, it is, he does it with a single sentence. God has old power, and he doesn't have to struggle to hang on to it. He, he has all the power to control everything he wants to. The issue is, are we willing to walk with him? That's tough. It's tough to walk in the pathway of Christ. You will fall. You will fail. I fall and fail. And I pick myself up, confess my sin, acknowledge my sin, and say, Lord, I do not want to be a problem child. I do not want to be a problem child. Someone who's giving you uh, headaches because of my behavior, or my speech, or my conduct, or my desire not to do what you ask me. But we walk in his light by being obedient. And that's difficult. It takes work, and repentance, and renewal. And boy, I don't know about you, maybe you're perfect, but I need lots of renewal. And I need lots of repentance. And I make lots of mistakes. And I, I get frustrated and say things that I shouldn't. I mean, my daughter 
had surgery on Friday, and uh, we've taken care of her and her children for the last few days. And she got up this morning and she said, oh, I feel so much better. And I said, I'd like you to make the bed. I was an idiot. I was an idiot. I, I didn't say, it's nice to see you. I'm glad you're feeling better. I just said, I want you to make the bed. <laughs> Can I take those words back? She went upstairs and went back to bed. I've got to do some repentance and confession to her. I did the wrong thing at the wrong time in the wrong moment. And I do hope she makes the bed. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if she doesn't, I will, and I will shut up, I hope. <laughs> you know, here in verse 1 of John 1, uh, 1 John says, in the beginning, what we have heard. John heard Jesus speak. We are have an eyewitness. This is the Jesus I saw. And then, amazingly, he says, not I saw, but we heard. We. He's not taking credit for this as himself, right? He's willing to give credit to other people as my insulin pump makes a fuss here. And it goes on to say what we have seen with our eyes. You know, every once in a while I see God move. I see with my eyes. Every once in a while in church or other places, I hear God speak. And, you know, like, I got up early this morning, I went out and walked, uh, and it was the cool of the morning, and I, just the scripture that came that God walks in the cool of the day in Genesis, and I thought, God, you're with me. I mean, God is with us now, every moment, we cannot hide a thought. We cannot hide an action. We cannot hide a feeling from him. And he loves us dearly. My goodness, it's hard to see how much God loves us, how much he's willing to work for us, how he wants us to be walking in his company as his companion. We need to be companions with God. Now, I have a dog that's a companion, and it's got a mind of its own. It sees a squirrel, and I better try to hang on to my arm. But, you know, most of the time, she's pretty good to get along with. And um, I want to be as good to God as my dog is to me. At least that'd be a step up for me. I mean, Gary gave me a little bumper sticker that says, God, we ought to forgive like our dog. Because <laughs> they forget about it after a short while, right? Step on a paw or something like that. You know. And it goes on to say, we beheld and touched with our hands. We, concerning the word of life, that's a person. That is Jesus Christ. That is God the Father. God's goal is to redeem you from hell and destruction. God's goal is to give you eternal life. God's goal is to give you a new mind and a new body. Hallelujah for a new body and a new mind. Oh, thank God. We need a, a new mind and a new body, and I need a new kidney. So, 
you know, we're, we're, it's, it's in the process. And the life was manifested. That means this is evidence. Manifest says, I have evidence that this is Jesus. That's a manifest is proof that this is so. And it doesn't say it once. It goes on to say it twice in case we're thick-headed. You know, it goes on to say, and we have seen and bear witness and proclaim the, that to you the eternal life. You know, when we meet people who are in sin, we need to proclaim eternal life. Not that we're perfect, not that we don't need to repent, but that Christ and our God can give them eternal life. What a gift. What a gift. And it says, which was with the Father and was manifest, proven to be true to us. If you're having doubts about Christ, if you're wondering, you know, God, you're really mistreating me. I really wanted that Mercedes Benz, you know. You, you've heard the song, right? I'm not going to sing it. It says, what we have seen and what we have heard, we proclaim. Hey, hey, your job is to go out and proclaim. My job is to proclaim that Jesus Christ is eternal life so that you may have fellowship with us, having God as your light and walking in the pathway of life gives you fellowship with other believers and more importantly, with him, with Christ, with God the Father, fellowship, companionship. And it shows our devotion to him. And it says, and with his son, Jesus Christ. And in verse 4, and these things we are writing so that our joy may be made complete. When you see someone baptized, I hear the clapping and shouting and the joy, and I weep when people ha are baptized. I like to sit down in the front and I can cry and no one will notice, okay? Because the joy of the Lord makes me weep just with joy. Who would ever think you'd weep with joy? Sheesh, what a wimp I am or something. <laughs> you know, but I do weep with joy. And it's, the, the joy that God gives us is complete. Complete joy. Now, most of our lives is not very joyful, is it? Ugh, someone's in my parking spot. You know, I mean, this this is too salty <laughs> and things like that. And, you know, if we would put our vision to the Father and to the Son, it will give us great joy. It's when we get sidetracked by all this stuff that's going on around us. And... It, go, it goes on, and this is a message we heard from him. Hey, this is coming from the horse's mouth. John walked with Christ. John was with Christ. John was assigned the responsibility to take care of Mary. Isn't that correct? You know, and that God is light. You know, a lot of people blame God for troubles. I, I had a neighbor who's moved away, 
and he would come and weep on my doorstep because he was an alcoholic. And he would say, why has God done this to me? God did this to me. And I would say, Ron, it's not God who's done this to you. It's you who's done this to you. And the next sentence out of his mouth would say, why has God done this to me? You've met people like that who blame God for all sorts of things. Haven't you? Lovingly, kindly, gently as you can, offer them a different voice to listen to. And that's up to them if they want to do it or not. But at least you gave them a gift. And they didn't may, may or may not pick it up. And it says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk, walk in darkness. Some of us know what it's like to walk in darkness. Some of us have spent times walking away from the Lord. Some of us have gone off on very, very deep and dark paths. Some of us had other people drag us along deep and dark paths. And in spite of all the things that have happened in our lives that have been terrible and awful, and other people who did them and the, us who did them, God will invite us back. He will say, come walk in my light. I will heal you from your sins. I will remove them from your mind one day. You'll have no memory of them. When we get to heaven, we will have no memory of our terrible and awful sins of neglect and occurrence. God loves us that much. I mean, our hatred of the way other people treated us, it's time to put it down. You put it away because Christ has saved us from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that means praise Yahweh. That's a literal 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 year old word. Every time someone says it, they're saying praise Yahweh. Now, do they mean it? I don't know. I've heard people say it over spaghetti. <laughs> what? I don't know if spaghetti is a hallelujah moment or not, but it's not for me to say yes or no. It says, if we continue to walk in darkness, we're liars. We're liars to ourself. The biggest lies that we tell are the ones we tell ourselves. Those are the ones we really have trouble shaking. You know, I have met um, many a person that loves to brag about everything they did. I was sitting in a room with about five, six, seven men who were multimillionaires. And they um, had farms and things like that and all this stuff. And they, each one of them would go around the room and say what they did and what they were bragging about and how glorious their achievement was and how wealthy there was. And the other six of them weren't listening at all. They were thinking about, well, I got something important to say. And I, they didn't even hear those other people. And I had the joy of listening to it. I thought, these men can't hear each other. They just want to brag about themselves. Empty, very, very, very empty. It's amazing how wealth can make people empty sometimes. 
but the, we need to get out of darkness. And it says, goes on, but if we walk in the light, woohoo, redemption, right? Now, John is not saying that we do not sin at all, right? John's not saying that. He's saying we're redeemable. And God's desire is for us to walk with him. We will have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. All sin. All sin. All. All of it. All of it. All of it. I mean, just think of how many times you've been attacked by sin. All of it can be cleansed. All of it. All of it. And we say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Have you met someone who acts like they're perfect? Hopefully it's not you. <laughs> you know. I mean, we only can come to God humbly, come to him asking for forgiveness, believing in his pardon, believing in his cleansing, believing in his fierce, consistent, desire for our fellowship with him that we may enter his presence in confidence. Hey, it's very doable. Right? It's doable. God desires us to be in his company. He wants us as his companion. It gives him tears of joy when we walk with him. It's a gift we give ourselves and give to him. Being obedient. And turning around and repent. Heavenly Father, there's more that can be said here and you would say it better. But I ask that your Holy Spirit brings these words to our hearts, that we will walk in your light. Amen. And, and Paul is better. Oh, yes, today. You're dismissed. <laughs>